الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today إن شاء الله تعالى as opposed to studying and beginning our journey and understanding the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى in particular جزء عما I'd like to go through just main points pertaining to ibadat acts of worship in the month of Ramadan. Now the Salaf al Salih the pious, righteous generations that came before us, they listed six or seven <coughs> most common acts of worship that these servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can benefit with in Ramadan. I.e. these acts of worship, one is able to excel in and one is able to try to implement in many different forms so as to get and reap the greatest reward in the month of Ramadan. But before that, we should firstly know that the month of Ramadan is not like other months. The month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the only month in which He subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned by name in the Quran. It's a glorious month, a month of opportunity, a month whereby the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has that opportunity to be able to, to multiply his actions and the rewards of his actions. And this is why, as we spoke about after the Salat al Isha, while a caller calls every single night saying, Oh, one who has khair, the one who wants to do good, this is your time to step forward. This is your time to implement good. So what are the ibadat of Ramadan? Now, whilst a person can look to any of the ibadat that Allah Jalla wa'ala has legislated, he can make dhikr, for example. He can go and perform umrah. He can be dutiful towards his parents. There are certain ibadat that the Salaf al-Salih used to say, these ibadat have an extra level of reward. Or these are the ibadat that the Salaf, the righteous generations before us, would spend more time ensuring that they can implement and act out in the month of Ramadan. The first and most important of them is the obligation of the month of Ramadan. As the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma mentions, whereby the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentions the hadith of Qudsi, whereby Allah jalla wa'ala says, the servant of Allah Jalla wa'ala cannot get close to Allah Jalla wa'ala except by the farad obligatory actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyu ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam, kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqun. So the most important ibadah of the month of Ramadan is this farad action, this obligatory action of fasting. Some of the scholars of Islam like Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya rahimahullah ta'ala and Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, they speak about the wisdom behind Allah Jalla wa'ala legislating the fast in the month of Ramadan. Because had he were not to not legislate the fast, majority of us wouldn't fast. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislates and prescribes, makes it, makes it obligatory for the servant to fast because this is one of the greatest acts of worship he can do in the month of Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions, that Allah Jalla wa'ala says, Kullu amal ibn Adam, every action that the son of Adam does is for him. Yudha'af al hasana Allah Jalla wa'ala increases the rewards. Ashru amthaluha, wa ashru amthaliha, by 10 rewards. Ila sab'i mi'ah, until 700, and even more beyond that. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this hadith al-Qudsi, Illa as-sawm, fa'innahu li, except for the fast, and the fast is for me. Wa ana adzibi. The fast is for me, and I will give him reward. Now, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives rewards for all actions. But for him to single out and specify that the fast is for me and I'm going to reward him, indicates by some of the scholars of Islam that there is no language that can explain the great reward that the fast has for the servant of Allah Jalla wa ala. Allah explains in his hadith Qudsi, as reported in Sahih Muslim, يَدَعُوا شَهْوَتَهُ وَطَعَامَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي He left his food, he left his desires, for my sake. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed and legislated the fast in the month of Ramadan because this is your greatest opportunity, your greatest possible uh, avenue for reward. There is no greater reward than the obligatory actions. This is the first point. The second point, or the second ibadah in the month of Ramadan, as we spoke about in the khutbah last week, the Salaf al-Salih, they would describe the month of Ramadan when they were asked, explain to me the month of Ramadan, they would say, it is the month of Quran. They will say it is the month of Quran. They will define it as the month of Quran. Shahr Ramadan الذي أنزل فيه القرآن. Ramadan was the month in which the Quran was revealed. إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر. The Quran was revealed on the night of power. 
So the month of Ramadan is the month of Quran. The servant of Allah Jalla wa'ala must reconnect himself with the book of Allah. He must try to recite as many copies and completions of the Quran. To the extent that Ibn Abbas, he explains, he says the Prophet was the most generous of people. But in the month of Ramadan, he was the most generous, was more generous than outside of the month of Ramadan. And then he explains, this is because Jibreel kana yalqahu. Jibreel used to meet up with him. Fi kulli laylatin, every single night in the month of Ramadan. And he would revise and recite the Quran of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So fasting actually has a partner. The fast has a partner, and that partner is Al-Quran. And this is why the Prophet says, As-Siyamu wal-Quran, the fast and the Quran, yashfa'an li abdi yawm al-qiyamah, will intercede for the servant of Allah Jalla wa'ala on the day of judgment. The fast will come and say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, allow me to intercede for him. For he was hungry, I kept him away from his food and his desires in the day. And the Quran will say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, allow me to intercede for him. For I kept him up at night when he would recite me. The second ibadah, is the Quran. This is why Imam, Ma- Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala would close his books and cancel his classes and he would spend the month of Ramadan reciting the book of Allah. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala would complete 60 copies of the Quran throughout the month of Ramadan. The ibadah that the Salaf would look, revolve around, make sure their lives would revolve around in the month of Ramadan was the Quran. This is the second ibadah. The third ibadah that the Salaf al-Salih would emphasize and try the utmost to hold on to is the ibadah of Qiyamul Layl. Is the ibadah of Taraweh, the night prayer. And this is because the Prophet Sallallahu says, Man qama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbi. All of you who are here today, your goal, your objective with regards to Qiyam is to ensure that you pray something. If you can't make it to the masjid, you pray something every single night after Isha prayer. If you can do this, inshallah ta'ala, then you fall under the category of those people that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa describes. That whoever stands the night in prayer, whoever stands up in the, in the night of Ramadan with iman, with faith, meaning he's a Muslim, and he wants Allah jalla wa ala's reward, ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi. All of his past sins are forgiven. And Shaykh Muhammad Mukhtar Shankiti, he says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't specify that it's only the minor sins. He left it unrestricted. He left it unrestricted. So the one who stands up every night in Ramadan, if you are busy, if you've got some work at night, if you're engaged in something else, at least try your utmost to perform the very minimum of two rak'ah. Two rak'ah, qiyam al-layl. By doing so every single night in the month of Ramadan, you have observed this third ibadah. And you have, inshallah ta'ala, at the end of the month, come to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being merciful to you and all of your sins. All of your sins have the possibility, the potential of being erased, your major, your minor sins, by just standing up every single night. And from the benefits of Qiyam, is that the Prophet ﷺ mentions in a hadith in Nasa'i, and Abu Dawood, and Ibn Majah. He says, Man qama ma'al imam, Whoever stands up with the Imam, so he begins his salah with the Imam, and he stays until the Imam leaves. Then it will be reported as if though, it will be written down, as if though he stood the entire night in prayer. And this is another reward of Qiyam. So this is why the Salaf al-Salih, the pious, righteous generations that came before us, they would look for the Imam and they would make sure he will stay with the Imam at the beginning of Salat al-Isha all the way until he finishes with her. Because a special reward in Ramadan is that the one who was able to do this, he doesn't disperse, he doesn't go after two rak'ah or four rak'ah, he tries his utmost and stays with the Imam until the end it will be written down in the month where my deeds are multiplied. That you stood up and you prayed the entire night in prayer. And the one who prays every single night of Ramadan, the entire night from Maghrib, because the night in, 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 in the Arabic language begins from Maghrib until, until Fajr. Imagine the reward of the servant of Allah who gets this particular act in, on his scales. And this is even more important for the one who finds Allah, looks for Allah on Laylatul Qadr, the odd nights having your deeds multiplied by over a thousand months. Stand with the Imam for Isha. And don't disperse, don't go home until the Imam leaves. We have eight raka'ah here, and they were written straight after. The one who wants to obtain and acquire this reward starts at Isha and then leaves when the Imam performs his witr, or after he completes his witr. This is the reward. This is the person who can get and obtain the reward of standing up the entire night. Number four, 
The Salaf al Salih said the fourth ibadah of the month of Ramadan is the ibadah of being generous. As the hadith of Ibn Abbas that I quoted earlier in Sahih Muslim, he mentioned that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaihi Wasallam, Ajwad al Nas, he was the most generous of people. وَكَانَ أَجْوَدْ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ And he was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلِ When Jibreel used to meet him. So from the ibadat, ibadat number four, is to show levels of generosity, to be kind, to give sadaqah, to smile at other people. General levels of generosity, not just to do wealth, but to do with your akhlaq and your adab, to do with your characteristics and your etiquettes of other Muslims. You're going to be with Muslims, standing beside people, meeting a large number of people every single night. Show levels of generosity. Show levels of generosity. Or even go beyond that and give charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadah number five, which is also connected to generosity. And this ibadah, some of the scholars of Islam, they say, is the... Is the uh, or other is a gem from the gems of Ramadan. Is a gem from the gems of Ramadan. Now, Ramadan has how many days? Twenty-nine days or or thirty days. It's possible for people to fast more than that. It's possible for people to fast thirty-five days, or forty days, or hundred days, or beyond that even more. And how may that be the case? The Prophet sallallahu says in a hadith reported by Tirmidhi. He says in a hadith reported by Tirmidhi and narrated by Zayd ibn Khalil al-Juhani. He said, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ فَطَّرَ, صا... من فطر صَائِمًا كَانَ لَهُ مِثْلُ أَجْرِهِ Whoever feeds a fasting person will get the reward of the one who fasted. Without the fasting person losing his reward in any shape or form. So the intelligent Muslim the intelligent Muslim is the one who purchases dates and leaves it in the masjid. The intelligent Muslim is the one who invites people to his home and makes them break the fast with him. The clever Muslim is the one who fasts 30 days. No, is the one who fasts more than 30 days in the month of Ramadan. And this is an ibadah, like I said, a gem from the gems of Ramadan. Many of our sisters... Qaddar Allahu Mashafal for you due to the decree of Allah Jalla wa'ala, they're unable to fast the entire month of Ramadan. Some of them would lose, they will think, seven days or maybe even two weeks. But those who are intelligent, those who are clever, may lose out on fasting themselves, but they have gained the fast of others. They have gained the fast of others. Be clever, O brothers or sisters in Islam. The Muslim is intelligent. Look for opportunities, look for ibadah to increase your rank on the Day of Judgment. Look to ibadah that are very easy. But then they have great, great reward and great strength on your scale. The intelligent Muslim is the one who comes and leaves some dates in the masjid. You know every day people are going to come from Maghrib and they're going to see these dates or they'll see some water, or they'll see some food and they'll need to break their fast with these dates. You have taken the reward of every single person that eats those dates without those people losing reward in any way, shape or form. This is ibadah number five. Ibadah number six is the ibadah of dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about the ayat of Ramadan in Surah Al-Baqarah, he begins by saying, Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al at the top of the page. Now the bottom of the page he says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ If my slave asks you about me, then I am near. And I respond to the calls of prayers of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ says, Thalath, la turad da'watuhum. There are three groups of people. Their du'as are never rejected. And from them he mentions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as-sa'in hina yuftir. The one who fasts until he breaks his fast. The reason why Allah Jalla wa'ala sandwiched the ayat of Ramadan, because in the second page on, in, in Al-Baqarah, where he speaks about the ayat of Ramadan, he speaks about the ahkam, the rulings of Ramadan. But he sandwiched, or not sandwiched, in, in between these two ayat of Allah Jalla wa'ala, or these discussions, he brings the ayah of dua. And the reason why he does this is because the fasting person has a dua that's not rejected. The fasting person has a dua that is not rejected. So the sixth act of worship that the Salaf would look to and try to implement in their lives and they would try to exploit in the sense that they would try to do so many times so as to get the mercy of Allah that they would understand that they as human beings have requests, they have needs. They need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill them. 
they have problems. We all have problems. We all have trials and tribulations. We all have something wrong with our families, some goals or achievements we can't yet acquire. We have problems, perhaps some of us financially, some of us from a health perspective, some of us maybe even our deen wise. Ramadan, when you're fasting, you have a dua that is not rejected. Ramadan, when you're fasting, you have a dua that will always be accepted. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa three groups of people whose duas are never rejected. as he says, the fasting person, until he breaks his fast. The fasting person, until he breaks his fast. There are many other ibadat you can do. Like I mentioned, there are many other ibadat you can implement in your lives. The ibadat of dhikr, the ibadat of going umrah, the ibadat of being good to your parents, and so on and so forth. But these six, the scholars of Islam say, are the six that stick out. Are the, stick that, are the six that have extra virtue. Great rewards. They'll weigh extremely heavy on your scales on the Day of Judgment. So I implore myself first and foremost than everyone else to look to these six ibadat and to try to implement them from today. Ramadan has started. And we have inshallah ta'ala 29 nights or 30 nights to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 29 days or 30 days to be able to try to maneuver our timetables and fit these ibadat in. Make this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala, to all of us. Make this Ramadan the best Ramadan you've ever had. Plan now. Make yourself a timetable now. And stick to it. And don't be distracted. Stick to it and add into it these six ibadat. So every day, you've got a portion of these six. And do that from now, because the one who prepares at the very beginning is the one that never fails. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have the greatest Ramadan we can ever have. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our ibadat and give us the tawfiq to go beyond beyond our our potential. Wa jazakumullahu khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.